do five mark questions where you get your real easy marks. That'll be 34 and that'll be 34. So you've got that bit right. So it's like 146. We've already got students now who were working at a C grade who weren't working at a C grade previously and they're saying it's because I've got help from a sixth former. What's growing in May? Crops. Crops. So what's it destroyed if it happened in May? Crops. I basically got to put that into like sentences. In sentences, yeah. I think uh, perhaps for a number of years our sixth form has been maybe an untapped resource. Uh, they've just gone through GCSEs themselves and they are the experts, so to speak. If I'm going, mm. not I'm going, so it's like missing out the Gs, that's a dialect. And if you mention these things like dialect and standard English, then that's what's going to get you marks. It's not just about the academic uh, subjects, it's about their confidence as well. And if they feel confident going into the exam, they're going to do far better. And all, all the angles there have to add up to... And I have to add up to um, 360, so what's why? Why is 360 minus 160? 200. Yep. We know exactly how they feel, we know we've, we've done it all before, so it, it can only be good for them to have someone who's been there before helping them. It's easier for mentee to be able to ask somebody a few years older than them questions or got any queries or whatever because in a classroom they might not feel comfortable asking a teacher in front of everybody. We're linked with them better, we communicate better, we can talk in like the way we talk, it's not all teacherified, you could say. Obviously you can tell when he's saying it, when he's saying like uncertainly and and yeah. it's Sarah saying it and Warris saying it. Yeah, it shows you that you, you don't feel really happy like about it. Ring, yeah. We started up peer mentoring because of the, um, the new ways of, of rating a school based on the five A star to C grade, uh, including maths and English. I haven't been doing too well in English, mainly English lit. And, um, well, they just asked if I'd, if I'd be interested in having a mentor, and I said, yeah. I'm being mentored in English, cos in my marks I didn't do right well, but now I'm being mentored, it's like getting better. And I felt that I didn't do as well in my maths mark, so I asked if I could have a mentor in maths as well. I've been mentored in geography because I was falling really behind on my geography coursework and my mock exam results weren't too well. So we're getting mentored, my results are getting better. We can't force students to do mentoring. That would just completely uh, negate the whole process. So what we do is we look for the ones that want to do it. If they decide it's not for them, we'll look for somebody else. Hello, Mark. Hello, Hello Ben. Hello, Ben. Just come to look at the, uh, the latest uh, assessment point data. We'll sit down and have a chat in a minute about how the ones who are on it are doing, and then I'll print this off and we'll have a look at any new students that we might have for it. All right, excellent. Okay. Yeah. Ben has been working with the data and is able to um, identify students that he believes would be, uh, on paper, the most suitable candidates for this. Right, have we got any that aren't attending? Alright, uh, main ones that we've got, um, Josh is not turning up for Daniel, Chris okay. Watson works very closely with the Year 11 office, so he's had a real influence on the Year 11 and he's bringing with him an awful lot of knowledge that he has of that year group and of the potential mentees. What about your end Chris, how's it doing, having to encourage any or are they going of their own free will and... Yeah they're all going of their, free will, uh, their own free will, it's just... You know, it's actually getting the kids, it's getting that in that, that cycle of, you know, getting kids into it and getting used to it. I think my biggest challenge is actually motivating some of the kids, not all, but I would say about 20% of the kids they feel like it's a chore. So it's it's actually motivating the kids to go and to achieve what the what they set out to achieve. What we're gonna do is we need a new history. Right, okay. A new history student. So have we got anyone that's on CD boardline for history at the moment? Well, I've got Colette. She looks like she's just come on new data. She's coming at the, she's, um, I don't know whether she's on a, a D before, but currently she's on a CD with history, so we could fill her in there. My role has been working with them, but my role has been more bringing post-16 students in um, and getting resources for them, um, uh, meeting with heads of faculty so that they can meet with the mentors um, to go through past papers, what they want out of them, in this, particularly in this last period in the build-up to the exams. The teachers teach them the main subject, they teach them what they need to know, and we just basically help them understand what they've been taught better, and if they have trouble with anything, we help them sort it out. It is challenging, and sometimes it does get stressful, 
Because if they ask you something and you don't know it, then you just feel like them. In, like, in that classroom, you're like, oh, what do I say? What can I say to him? But then you just sort of got to just take it back and just say, oh, I'll bring it to you next week, I'll get back to you. It obviously helps if you're a top grade student because it, let's say if you were a D grade student, you wouldn't be really good at helping a, a, a mentee to get a C. Um, but let's say you only got a C, but you're doing it at A level and you're doing quite well, it, it's still, you've still got the skills to teach it, I think. I got into mentoring because I did some work experience in the English department and uh, they suggested to go into mentoring and it would be the next step um, to get me some more experience in teaching. So this I'm probably looking at adjectives, you know, to describe him, um, or things that he says. So if you just want to have a quick scan through, see if you can see anything like that. She's helped me and she can break it down like more than my teacher. She can like sit there with me and like point out the things that I could say. I meet up with Jodie once a week and I'll meet up with a teacher once every few weeks and she'll give me things to do, um, some of Jodie's work to go through, things that Jodie's struggling with. Right, examination technique. We've just completed Of Mice and Men. I don't just give her exam papers or give her instructions and say you can go away and do it. We talk it through and specifically I guide Leanne based on what I feel Jodie's needs are. How many marks do we get for that question? It's good because she actually questions me, should I do this, shall I do this, will it be okay? I've prepared this for Jodie and I will say yes that's okay or, and we go from that. But it doesn't tend to take a lot of time for me to do that. What's the first thing that people have highlighted, Jodie? Excitedly. And what does that tell us? Is it a speech or a behaviour? Behaviour. A behaviour. I think mentoring works in cases such as Jodie's where she needs them extra few marks just to get there because she's got the C that she needs in her coursework but it's her exam that's bringing her down and she just needs that extra push. The fact that she has a sixth form student investing time and interest in her has boosted her confidence enormously. So on a personal level, it's really worked. And on an academic level, in terms of improving her performance, she seems to have focused in very much on the value of the mentoring sessions. And if I question her in lessons, I can tell she's picking up from those things that Leanne is trying to pass on. His voice grew soft and and persuasive. So what does that tell us? His voice grew soft and persuasive. He's really trying to scare Lenny. OK, yeah. That's one of his techniques, isn't it? It's really up to you how much you put into it, cos you could just go in there and say, right, what do you need help with? Right, this is how you do it, you do it like this. Um, but if you take it upon yourself to go and find work and do other things with them to help them, it looks better on you as well, so you've given them that little bit more help. Your feelings, so I feel, I think, you know, so it's, that one's probably the easiest one for you to do because that's probably your strength, because I know you, you, I know you can do better at that than picking out bits. Yeah. You can get the 10 marks for that if you concentrate and if you do it. And if it were based on just that alone, you get the C definitely, I know you would. English mentoring probably features quite highly because we do have a number of students who come in to us at 11, reading well below the chronological age. I think sometimes it's a confidence issue with English. Maybe, you know, it's about sort of developing longer answers, it's about finding ways of putting down your opinions and so on. Do you think that she's happy that he's bought this ring or that she's annoyed? She's annoyed. Yeah, so as long as you're tentative, which is like, this could mean, this will, but as long as you can't be wrong in English, it's all your own opinion. Having said that, last year, the results at English C grade, we got 68% of our students got a C or better, so if it's peer mentoring that makes a difference, then, you know, we need to use it more. OK, Kirsty. I get involved with the Year 11s uh, by looking at the data, looking at which students are the sort of borderline students, particularly the ones who have got the potential to get the 5A to C, including English and Maths. Uh, and then I spend just a few minutes with them every time we have an assessment point, just really making sure they know that I know what they're doing, what grades they're getting. What this in data is indicating to me is that you're doing 
quite well in your maths and you're pretty well on target, but your English, you're currently on a D, could get a C grade. Is that, yeah. is that right? Yeah. Um, so talk to me a little bit about your English. What, it gives me the chance to ask to them what strategies we're using that are actually effective. Uh, and, you know, it's a sort of a bit of an evaluation in a way. I'm just not very good at literature. I um, end up writing stories, like explaining it, and I find it hard not to do that, but the mentoring's meant to be helping. Some of the conversations I've had with the students, the Year 11s, have been around the sort of fact that they're quite uh, surprised and, and quite in awe of the fact that these Year 12 students are so good at the subject that they're, you know, they're working with them on. He knows what he's talking about and yeah, he explains it in a way I can understand. And is that making you feel more confident yourself in yeah. preparing for your exams? Yeah, it's helping yeah. like planning things and highlighting yeah. bits which are important. But they're recognising that it's it's yeah. good to be able to do things and it's cool to be able to learn and, and achieve and you know that's a real sort of culture change and I think students are actually helping us to do that far more effectively maybe than some teachers. What else do you think that we could do, Kirsty, to help and support you to get that um, all important C grade at GCSE? Well, it's only 20 minutes a week, so I prefer to do it like maybe twice or three times so I can get more help because it, 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 it turns out to be 15 minutes after you've got your mark and got down there and got settled. They don't come because they have to, they come because they want to improve the grades and they want to get better. So that, that helps in a way because if you didn't have someone who wanted to learn, it'd be harder for them, for you to teach them what they're struggling with. I do think it works. Um, she's improving already, Kirsty, and I think that's probably down to me as well as, as a teacher. I think mentoring does work, cos I did it last year, and it got me grade I wanted in maths, which I was predicted an E, and I got a C, so it was like a big improvement. You can afford a good ring. Yeah. What did you pick that one for? Yeah, because he's telling him he can afford it. Yeah, sort of like manipulating his yeah. thoughts and feelings into... This is the second year it's been running, and from the year before, it's I think it's like more than doubled in numbers. So, for instance, you've got someone who does peer mentor and their friend done, they come to you and say, can I have a peer mentor? And th they are actually on a DC borderline, but at first they might have refused to do it. So it's, it's, it's nice to know that kids are coming up and asking for this help. Right, about the cashier having a week old chewing gum in her mouth, you know, um, I got a B when I wrote that, so... I think what we will find is more and more students will think, oh, well, I, oh, I'd quite like that as well. So I think it will grow and grow, but, um, you know, I wouldn't be unrealistic in thinking that, you know, we just give everybody a peer mentor and then it'll solve everybody's problems. What we do see is a lot of uh, qualitative feedback about how they're enjoying it, how it's giving them more confidence um, and how much they, they are looking forward to coming into the post-16 next year. You're always going to give us the information that they give you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's always easy. 1980. Affected. The local people in many different ways. I see my mentor more as a friend than a teacher. Like, he's not pressuring me into doing anything. I just know I'll gradually get better if I listen to him.